Claw machines are a scam. And to prove my point, I'm actually going to a claw machine arcade to conduct a little experiment. Let's go. I'm with my friend Ching here. And behind us is a claw machine arcade in a shopping mall. So today we're going to have some fun by trying to see how many attempts we'll need before we get our first prize with the claw machine. So are you ready for this? Ready. Okay, let's do this. Before we started to play, I was hoping we were going to get a prize after 20 tries or so. So we changed 20 ringgit into tokens and picked a pink panther claw machine. And off we go. We failed on our first attempt as expected and we failed again and again and again and again. But after much frustration and 45 tries, we finally got it on the 46th try. <laughs> now, I did some digging into how arcade claw machines work, and according to Vox.com, on page 8 of the manual for Black Tie Toys claw machine, the machine's owner can actually adjust the pickup and retaining strength of the claw beforehand so that it only has a strong grip a fraction of the time that people play. The owner can also adjust the dropping skill effectively affecting how the claw will drop a price that is grabbed before it delivers to you. And you know what's even more ridiculous? The machine can also allow the owner to set the profit rate, then let the machine automatically adjust the claw strength. So in our case, the toy costs around 11 ringgit, the game costs 1 ringgit per game, and it took us 46 tries to get our price. So that equates to a profit rate of over 400%. That is just insane. And being an Asian, I love saving money. And that's a really horrible deal. So vowing not to get scammed again by the claw machines in the arcade, I decided to use my engineering skills and knowledge in LEGO Mindstorms and set out on a mission to come up with a claw machine that can grab a price every single time. I started off with measuring the sizes of the soft toys that I could get my hands on, then how many of those toys that I want to fit into the claw machine. And eventually, I decided on a claw machine size that measures approximately 70cm wide by 70cm deep by 120cm tall. For the load bearing structure and mechanisms of the claw machine, I used mainly Technic elements. As for the main control architecture of the claw machine, I used three Mindstorms EV3 controllers. The joystick have four touch sensors as inputs and are connected to the master EV3. The grab button, which uses a touch sensor, and the coin sensor, which uses a light sensor, are connected to the second EV3. The third EV3 has a motor that controls the claws forward and backward, a motor that controls the claws left and right, a third motor that controls up and down, and a fourth motor for the claws open and close. Daisy chaining three EV3 controllers together allows me to essentially treat them as one single controller with a total of 12 inputs and 12 output ports. To home the claw machine when it first initializes, a touch sensor is used for X-axis homing, a second touch sensor for Y-axis homing, and a third touch sensor to sense when the claw has reached the toys so the claw can start closing. If you take a closer look at a claw machine, the most intricate and complex part of the claw machine has to be the claw itself and the carriage above it that travels along the X and Y axis, as well as the Z axis when the carriage lowers or raises the claw. Now, taking references from actual claw machines, my first claw prototype design was a three finger claw with each finger equally spaced at 120 degrees. The downside of this design is there is no easy connection to the motor due to the triangular structure. The horrendous slack in the jaw finger can also affect how firm the claw will grip the toys. So for my second claw prototype, I experimented with four finger claw design that was equally spaced at 90 degrees each. The four finger design allows more intuitive connection options to the motor, the fingers have less slack and the overall structure is more solid than three finger design. After successful tests on the soft toys, I went with the superior four finger claw design. Next up is the carriage design. If you remember my earlier sketches on the carriage, it needs to carry the claw along the x-axis, lowers and raises the claw, 
and needs to know when the claw has reached the toys for the claw to close at the right moment. This is where this pulley and the lift arm configuration comes in. Now when the weight of the claw is pulling on this lift arm, the touch sensor is released. As soon as the claw reaches the toys and its weight rests on the toy, the lift arm raises and pushes the axle to touch to the touch sensor, which presses the touch sensor signaling to the controller the claw has reached the bottom. So next comes the gantry design, which is responsible for moving the claw and the carriage along the y-axis. With the gantry spanning almost half a meter on the x-axis, it becomes increasingly difficult to make sure both ends of the gantry to move in sync. Now, As soon as the gantry is skewed on one side when moving along the y-axis, the whole gantry gets stuck. Well, there are two ways to solve this. Either I can add another motor on the other side and have both motors move in sync, but I'm out of motor parts on the third EV3 controller and trying to connect it to the first two controller is just too far away and the cables are too short. So, I went with the second solution and retained the one motor design with mechanical synchronization through an extremely long shaft running through the middle and this turns out working better than I expected. With all the moving mechanisms of the claw machine figured out, I moved on to the frame design. Knowing this was a huge build and I probably didn't have enough of the pieces I needed to build the frame, I modeled the entire frame in LDD or LEGO Digital Designer so that way I can generate a bomb list with the exact type and number of bricks I needed to complete the build. Based on the bomb list from LDD, I needed old frames and H frames like lots of old frames and H frames. Guns. Lots of guns. After checking out the prices on Bricklink, I eventually ended up buying two more sets of 4200 bucket wheel excavator at a discount as it offered the most bang for buck for getting lots of old frames, like a total of 53 old frames in one set. The frame also needed a lot of Technic panels if I were to cover all sides of the claw machine, so that was simply too expensive, so I cheated and chose a way more economical solution. Foam boards, yep, the foam boards are cheap, light and can be cut to size and painted with acrylic paints. As for the transparent panels, I decided to use 2mm clear acrylic panels pre-cut and drilled by a local hardware store according to my CAD drawings. What you're seeing here is a player controls module which houses the joystick, grab button, token slot and the master controller which also doubles as the display for the player. Every time the player pushes the joystick in one of four directions, one of four touch sensor will be pressed which sends a signal to the controller to move the claw in that particular direction. The grab button is also connected to a touch sensor as an input which tells the controller to lower and closes the claw. For token detection, a color sensor is mounted below the joystick to sense the presence of the token using color detection mode. Due to the size of the claw machine, standard cables were just not long enough for the claw to lower all the way to the bottom and for the carriage to cover the extreme corners of the machine. So I had to crimp my own custom cables using connectors that I bought from mindsensors.com. With the mechanical construction and the programming done, it's time to show you the LEGO claw machine in its full glory.
Okay guys, I have a confession to make now. This call machine was actually built back in 2018, but back then I didn't know anything about YouTube. And now that I do, I'm making this video because with all the effort and hard work that went into the call machine, I think it deserves a video on its own on my channel. In 2018, I was fortunate enough to be invited as one of the exhibitors to showcase the Mindstorms call machine for a LEGO event held in Wanotama shopping center where it was used as a lucky draw machine for shoppers to redeem their gifts. Despite my best efforts to engineer a claw that supposedly never drops a price, a successful grab still depends not only on the shape and size of the price, but also a little bit of luck. At the end of the day, I did not quite achieve my mission of creating a LEGO claw machine that guarantees a price 100% of the time. But maybe, for the children who got to play with the LEGO claw machine, that experience sparked their interest in science and engineering, which in turn, inspires them to become future scientists and engineers. I hope you learned something from this video, and maybe even inspired you to build something awesome yourself. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, Leave a comment, share the video, let me know what you think about this video or this build, and I'll see you in the next one.